Football Unknown. Hey everyone, welcome back to a new episode of the Football Unknown Podcast. I am your host, Karel Rosary, and today we have a special episode. And before we start, I'm going to let the guest kick it off as he introduced himself. So guests, go ahead, kick it off. What's up, guys? It's uh, Davide Viola here from Italy, uh, currently a FA Human soccer, uh, soccer player. Mm-hmm. Uh, I moved here last August, so I just played two seasons uh, in the U.S. with college soccer. Uh, but I had a whole career back home in Italy before uh, moving here, and I'm uh, quite excited to tell you, man. Okay, okay, yeah. and 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 just for just for the, the people could know, how, how old are you again? And uh, I'm 24. I will turn 25 pretty soon. I'm a grad student, so okay. I absolutely. arrived here with uh, I would say a huge pack of experience on my back. Okay, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, okay. I have uh, I have a full picture of uh, football because I call it football, it's not soccer. Uh, exactly, it's football, <laughs> absolutely. I have a full picture of football back in Europe and here and it's, uh, it's very interesting how like things change mm-hmm. uh, between the two part of the world, it's completely different. Okay, we're, we're definitely going to talk about that, okay? Definitely, so man. as we kick it off, I'm going to hit you with the famous question, okay? Okay. When can you recall was the first time that you fell in love with the game of football, David? Talk to me about that. If you, the wow. earliest recollection of you falling in love with the sport. Talk to me. Wow. So, okay. So, basically, like, my family, my dad used to play soccer, football, okay. sorry. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> my mom used to play basketball. So, oh. I locally raised with, like, a sports family. Like, yep. You know, sports is, yep. is very athletic DNA. family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I... I think I'm an old generation. So right now the kids are playing video games or stuff. Yep. At my age, when I was four years old, three years old, yep. I already was out in my garden, like in my backyard playing soccer, yep. playing football yep. with yep. my friends. Absolutely. So my first recall, I was probably, I don't know, four years old mm-hmm. and I already wanted to start uh, with some academy. Really? But At four? You had the idea of yeah, you want to... Yeah, definitely, definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. Uh, especially because my dad is from Rome. We are like mm. Roma fan. And Roma fans are like so so into the game. Yep. Like we're very engaged. so passionate. Yeah. Yep. We are so passionate about it. So like I had this inside and I had all my friends playing already in academies because they were older than me. Yep. So I wanted to start, uh, but eventually I was too young, I couldn't. So what I was doing is just like playing with the older guys in the afternoon in the backyard. Yep, yep. And and then as soon as I started, I was probably Six years and a half. Okay. Uh, and after six months, I had the big call from AC Milan, and I will tell you, bro. Really? <laughs> so, 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 okay. So around six is when they begin, yep. you know, bringing players in, starting that process. Yeah. So for the professional academies, uh, yeah. I would say like uh, you can start with them when you are seven years old. Seven. Okay. Seven. Yeah. Seven years old. Before seven, they start looking around, but there's not really like the official academy. Yep. Yeah. They just like notify you they're like uh, coming to your games or whatever yep uh but like you can't be part of a professional wow uh, so so they they start looking for players at at six seven right yeah i remember when i was seven uh i had a couple of trials with them yep uh because the very first team that called me up was monza at the time, Monza, Monza was playing in third division. Okay. Now he's in Syria. Uh, oh, wow. That's, that's, that's but, a big jump, right, over yeah, the years. Yeah, but my mom didn't want to, you know, from my house, Monza was like 40 minutes away. Okay. And I would have I would have taken the bus of the club <laughs> yeah. every day yeah. for like 40 minutes. I was like six, seven years that's old. That's so crazy. She, my mom didn't allow me to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then AC Milan called me up, and yep. I, I've done a couple of trials, and I remember... There were probably like 5,000 kids. Absolutely. 5,000 <laughs> 5, kids. 5,000 kids. And out of those 5,000 kids, they just selected three of us. What? Three of us. Okay, okay. So we have to walk <laughs> through this. Okay, we have to walk through this. So so at six, so you're four, you know, you still have, you're still four, you know, and, and you want to get involved. You want to get involved in, 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 in the travel, the competitive side of soccer, of football, okay? And then around six is when you finally started being able to get get active and, and start like going and doing those tryouts. Yep. So was it around six or seven was when you went to that tryout for AC Milan? I went to the tryouts uh, like a couple of months before I turned seven. Okay, a couple of months before I turned yeah. seven. And how far was AC Milan from, from where you lived at the that time? That was actually perfect. It was in miles probably 3.5 miles. Oh, yeah. so that's really good. Yeah. Okay, so did they reach out to you while seeing, you know, you play or, or was it just like, you know, if you want to try out for, for the academy for AC Milan, 
you know, they, you, you go yeah. over there, you get invited. How, how does that work? No, so the thing is that I was playing for like an academy, not professional academy. It was like a, a small club. I don't okay. know, here there are like, I don't know, Boca club in Boca. Yeah, like, like, travel, like different like travel that. teams. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I used to pay to be part of that academy. Absolutely. Uh, but the thing is that every game I was scoring like, I don't know, six, seven goals. Mm. I was playing striker at the time. Yep. Too uh, easy for you, man. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, I, as I said, like Monza called me up, but my mom didn't allow me to go. And yep. after a couple of months, AC Milan noticed me. And they invited me to go practice with them a couple of times. Wow. So my very first trials wasn't with the actual kids that were already part of AC Milan. Yep. Uh, but from the second one, I practiced for like a week with them. Okay. And... I felt so bad. Like my level was so low if yep. compared to them. Yeah, compared to them. And it, it's crazy already. Like how different was the level at the time? Really, <laughs> it was crazy. Yep. Uh, but eventually, like uh, I did a pretty good job, and they called me up after probably a month. Okay. Um, uh, but the thing is that I didn't want to go because they they told me they needed a player to play in defense. Oh. And I was like. There's okay. no way. My idol was Totti because yep. I'm a Roma yep. fan. Yep. Totti, you know, playing striker, really killing at striker, you know, man. Totti was playing like, not a striker, but it was an offensive exactly, player. Exactly. Yeah, more was, of an, absolutely. Yeah, it was a scoring and stuff. So my, my dream was to score goals. Yep. Yep. So I was like, uh, nah, I, I'm not going there. I want to keep scoring goals. Mm -hmm. I don't want to play defense. Mm -hmm. uh, but two things, like inside, I felt like I was the worst player uh, if compared to the AC Milan kids. So yep. I was like, there's no way. Like, I have to reach that level. At Absolutely. Least. Absolutely. To, yeah, I have to arrive there, mm -hmm. first thing. And the second thing that I thought, it was like, okay, I was, I remember this. I was at dinner with my family, okay? okay? My brother and my parents. After, after the tryouts, you know, after yeah. you got the offer, I, but then they told you. I had you. the offer. I had the offer. I was at dinner. And yep. I, I kept telling my, my dad, like, there's no way I go there. Like, I don't want to <laughs> go there. I don't want to play defense. Yep, yep. Uh, and then he was like, are you sure? Because, listen, in AC Milan, there is, at the time, there was still, like, Inzaghi, Gattuso, Ooh. Pirlo, Maldini, Ooh. Nesta. I was like, oh you know what? Man, listen. I, 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 might, I might change my you mind. You know I might change your mind. <laughs> <laughs> I might change my mind. Yep. Uh, so after that, uh, in a week, uh, I signed and uh, I started playing for Right, Asian Really? Man. It was so, after that dinner, man. You yeah. talk with your dad. You no, know, you change your like, mind. You're right. Uh, I was like, you're right. Like, it's full of champions. Yep. I want to be there one day. And Absolutely. If this is the path. I'm gonna do let's it. Let's go it. Absolutely. Yeah, let's do it. So after that talk, you know, you decided to go. How was it, you know, first like what was the process, you know, moving into the academy and getting used to, you know, the schedules and just being a part of that program? Talk to me about about how you how it was entering into it. Yeah, so you know um AC Milan is like I think is in Italy one of the few elite clubs, like in, in the world in general. Absolutely, yes. So the exactly. first thing was more educational mm -hmm. like the schedule was pretty strict and stuff but they set strict rules yep you had to follow absolutely you have to stack with like i don't know for example when you i, I played that for 10 years so when uh i grew up no piercing no tattoos Ooh, no this kind of okay. stuff now it changed but yeah. at the time it was like that okay very strict uh, yeah and i remember the first three years uh as i was young i was seven uh seven to ten it was mandatory to also go do swimming. Mm. Uh, so we were practicing three times a week, plus all the weekend we were playing both Saturday and Sunday. Yep, yep. Uh, but two times a week we were going swimming too. That's interesting. So do, do you know, you know, now looking back at it, do you know why they would make it mandatory for you guys to go swimming? Was there like a benefit, you know, that they were trying to, what was it? Apparently there is some, there are some benefits, uh, yep. more about like, uh, you know, um, I think it's more, not about recovery, it's more the, the way you actually like grow up, oh. like you develop your body and stuff. Yep, yep, so so swimming has a lot. coordination Absolutely. and stuff like that. Oh, okay. The activation of all your muscles in your body. Yep. Uh, and I hated that. <laughs> <laughs> I hated that. <laughs> I hated that. But yep. that was definitely one of the weirdest things uh, yeah. I had to go through. Uh, and at, at seven, you know, first getting into it, the, the, yeah. the major guys do that? So yeah. young? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, and then I remember a lot of, uh, a lot of traveling already. Mm -hmm. uh, so I remember my friends, they weren't play football. Mm -hmm. uh, they were normal kids. Nobody Absolutely. had, the, for example, nobody had a phone. I 
had to have a phone because maybe we were flying to Portugal or Germany mm. to play with some other some other team. The academy, which, yeah. Yeah, which was I mean, for a kid at that age, it's some saying, yeah, was amazing. Absolutely. Honestly, I played when I was nine years old. I played against Real Madrid, Benfica, oh, like all the top man. clubs in Europe. And when you actually like play against kids that are playing at the top in another country, it's yep. like it's very eye opening. It's very eye opening, yeah, right? Interesting, man. Interesting. It's very interesting. And I, I played with players that now are still playing in like Champions League. Yep. And at the time, I could already tell you, like this guy, they, they're gonna make he it. Has you know? He yeah, has something. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So let's go moving into, you know, your first year. You said that, you know, you realized even during the trials that, you know, the level that these AC Milan Academy youth players were yep. at, you know, you, you had to you had to really go and, 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 and really step up to it. Yep. So what are some, and, and now you're moving into a, a, a new position, right? Because you're yep. playing striker, you're playing, at, you're attacking player the entire time. And then now you have to adjust completely, yep. completely to it. So how was that? How, you know, how was it getting used to that? And like, what, what are some things that, you know, you faced trying to reach that bar and so, change just yeah. your whole playing style? So the thing is that the coach, uh, the, all, all the staff in the, the academy of AC Milan was perfect for the age you were at. Absolutely. So for the first three years, I had this coach. He was very good with kids. Mm -hmm. uh, and he made us do a lot of 1v1 situations or 2v2. Uh, it was like a game, the practice, so it wasn't like mentally uh, heavy. Okay. But at the same okay. time, you get used to like the rhythm, you get used to like the quality. Mm -hmm. And then during the games, man, I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> I for the first year at least, I was just playing simple. Yep, 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 yep. Just yep. control the ball, touch the ball, and give the ball to the best player. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> For the first year, I did that. Absolutely. Uh, and then when I started becoming more confident and also my level, like, high, I kind of reached the level after the first year, mm -hmm. uh, I started, like, actually playing my game. Absolutely. And I feel I feel like that's how, you right, they, they want you know, the youth players to go, especially like when you're first coming into it, they want to teach you the basics, they want you to play simple. Yep. And then, you know, as you get more confident, as you build that, that technical ability, you know, you, you, you get more freedom to do certain things. Yep. So I think, man, that's a, that's a very interesting way and a very unique way of how, you know, they go about it in Europe compared to, compared to yeah. the US. The thing that uh, actually shocked me is like, there were players that now are playing professional mm -hmm. in, in Syria, Syria B, mm -hmm. some of them uh, around Europe. Yep. Uh, that were doing things that I didn't even think about. Like you, mm -hmm. you could see those things like maybe on TV yep. from like top levels, you know. Mm -hmm. And they were doing those things at seven years old. Like, how could you even think about that play? You know, like exactly, exactly. That was what shocked me. Like the level, it, it wasn't more technical, mm -hmm. but more like the tactical and technical mm -hmm. intelligence mm -hmm. of the players. Absolutely. You know. Okay. That was something very big, and yep. I, I had to get used to that. Yep. You know, like, uh, I don't know, for example, in no normal kids, when uh, the striker has the ball, he just tries to run to you and then shoot. Yep. At the time, they were already, like, doing combinations or, like, uh, they were faking with the body. They were using the body to protect man. the ball. Man, at seven years old, what? bro, you are in another different level. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> man. So I had to get used to that. Yeah. And then from there is it's just it's, it yeah. went up. Yeah. So so let let's do a recap of the first year. Like, w was there any moments or any memories that really stuck out with you? you? You know, your first year playing for that academy. Anything that really stuck out before you move up? Uh, I think the first. Uh, it's more like, no, I think the first year was, Just getting I didn't even realize uh, what I was doing and where I was. Okay, at. okay. Uh, and also, it's also because the first year, probably like we played a lot of games against like not professional teams, uh, but like two, three, four years older. Oh. So the game were tough. Yeah. The games yeah, were yeah, tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that helped me a lot mm -hmm. to develop like my physical you know, ability. Yeah, fitness. Absolutely. Especially. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, so so moving up to your, your second years, right? So how, how was it, you know, getting used to it your first year? Like you said, right? The first year was, was just playing simple, getting used to everything, you know, really just learning, absorbing everything. Okay. And then moving up to your second year, right? How was that? How, you know, anything you, you could recollect? The second that? year is, uh, is actually the first year that I enjoyed and I realized that I was at AC Milan. Mm, okay. <laughs> uh, especially <laughs> because uh, the European season goes from like, uh, around September to yep. the end of May yep. or June. Okay? Absolutely, yep. And I realized because I was eight years old and, you know, 
all my friends were on vacation during mm-hmm. the summer. You mm-hmm. are off school and stuff. Mm-hmm. But w- if you play in AC Milan or other clubs, you have to get back for preseason. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so even if you're young, they don't let you be on vacation for three, four months. <laughs> ah. So I had to get back and start how practicing. Long, how long do they give you guys to, you know? So it, every year by year, they yep. started calling you earlier every oh, day every year really so when i was young it was probably uh the last week of august mm-hmm. which still was insane yeah like bro. the other kids of my age Damn. that were playing soccer yeah football they were starting probably at the end of september <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> so absolutely so yeah. they're, they're really yeah. yeah so they make sure you understand where you are and what you're doing mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. but no i i enjoyed it honestly and then we started playing against uh, professional teams against the first derbies against Ooh. Inter. Yeah, it's my second year. Yep, and I remember the feeling they were like hyping up a lot these games. Mm-hmm. You know, even if yeah, you're yeah. eight years old, it's like yep. Milan against Inter. They were hyping up. Yep. So you were starting managing with kind of pressure, which back I mean now I can tell you like was nothing. Mm-hmm. Like the pressure was like just the coach was creating this atmosphere. Yeah, you know, exactly, exactly. To yeah. hype, hype up the game, to make you guys, you know. Yeah. Okay. So I, I enjoyed that. And the first few games against Inter were were tough mentally. Really? Because talk, talk, talk to me about that. You know, how, how was it? Yeah. So the thing that I remember, it? Inter used to sign like a lot of Reigns players. Okay. So like uh, a lot of players also for from Africa. And mm. they were more developed the as like physically physically physical wise it was yeah so i remember i struggled a lot against a few players yep and the other players uh they were like technically insane mm. i i was like these kids are not <laughs> are not joking they know yep. what they're doing yep yep <laughs> yep uh but i mean we we had a good team too so the those games were tough like most of them we tied honestly mm. but with a lot of goals because you know at the time you still play like I think we were playing seven v seven. Okay. Or eight v eight. Yeah. Because I mean, you still like. Yeah, you eight at you nine at the time. Or yeah, you eight. You eight. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I remember mentally, I started like deal with uh, all this kind of pressure and the pregame yep. and this yep. kind of stuff, Absolutely. and there was something totally new to me mm. because before that, for me, football was just like you know, like, I'm having fun. Yep. I'm better than the other kids. I know that, and who's better than me? He's playing with me now. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep, <laughs> no? absolutely, absolutely, yep. And we started playing against Inter, against Atalanta, and mm-hmm. oh, you know what? Shoot. There are other kids that are good, at uh, least at like you. Yep. So, yeah, I had to deal with this the second year, and it was it was a hit me. Yep. That, that hit me, honestly. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but then eventually, that's that's what, like helps you to to grow and develop exactly your, it builds your you up it yeah. builds you up so so you know now looking back right after that second year compared to that first year after facing those you know the like initially facing you know those mental challenges right yeah. can you see do you see like how how much it it, it helped your game right compared to your first yeah. year you know and after concluding your second year yeah you realize that i i think the main thing the main aspect when you are eight mm-hmm. is realizing that i don't know you're playing against inter you're playing against Real Madrid. Yeah. Like, you have to get used to, don't think about the name of the club, but just go and play your game anyways. Absolutely. Yep. So, because yep. you know you are AC Milan, uh, so, like, you don't have to be scared of any other team, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. You just have to go there and play just your play game. play your game. But that's something you have to get used to, especially yeah. when you're that young. Exactly. Because, as exactly. I said, I thought, like, we were the best. Yeah. And then, guess what? We were not. We're not the best, <laughs> right? <laughs> there were other kids out there good as us really so. that's very interesting yeah. so so moving up right after after you know you, you had you had that that awakening of of how of how right the competition really is yeah okay what was you know the next challenge or memory whether it be good or bad that you face right moving up through through the academy system right so you're playing u9 u8 at the time u9 uh it was u8 u8 and moving up what was like the next you know challenge or memory you could you could you could re- you could recollect? so f- I would say like uh, in the first, let's say from U9 to U12, U13. Okay. Yep. Uh, one aspect is like you start changing coaches and stuff. Mm. So you have to learn how to get something different from each coach. Okay. Because as you grow up, what they're teaching you is different. 
Exactly. Of course. Exactly. And every person can transmit you something like it could be knowledge. It could be something like more personal, yep. like more you know character wise. Absolutely. Uh, and you have to learn how to take the best out of each coach you have during your journey. Mm -hmm. And something I really enjoyed uh, in those years was the traveling part. We, as I said, we went to Germany, we went to Spain, we went to Portugal. Mm. We played against every single team. We played against that. We had the tournament called Mundialito okay. that was uh, between Spain and Portugal. So we were traveling around Spain and Portugal. Yep. And the tournament had teams from all around the world, also South America. I remember Club America was there. Yep. Um, all the top teams in Europe were there. Really? And it was just us and Juventus representing Italy. Uh, and Only you two? Yeah. Okay. They didn't call up Inter, they didn't call up Rome. They didn't Interesting. Call up okay. Nobody. Yep. And I remember that we absolutely smashed that tournament. Really? Like we won a lot of games and we arrived to the semifinals against Benfica. Oh. Uh, and that Benfica was the generation of uh, Jao Felix, uh, of uh, Jota, that yep. now is playing, yep. you know? Yep. Uh, they okay, had then. also, um, uh, what is it called? Like Luizinho? I don't know. The, yep. the midfielder? Yeah. Oh. He's the black guy. He's, I think he's still playing for Benfica. Yeah. But, those guys, like, also during, I don't know, the U17, U18, they won everything with the national team. So, like, oh they were goodness. very good. Like, exactly. They, they were, were very informed. Good. They were very good. And having the opportunity to just, like, you know, playing against them, playing against Real Madrid. We beat Real Madrid. And I scored against them. Like, <laughs> was that was probably the, the highlight of those yep, years for me. Yep, yep. Uh, but just having the opportunity to, like, go there and play mm -hmm. against them and... Against Benfica, we lost eventually in the PKs, but yep. you know we still played for the third, fourth uh, position for yep. in the tournament. So, so yeah. like okay, so it was in the semis against Benfica, PKs. You guys, were, you guys, we, we didn't, we didn't make it. We didn't make we it. Didn't make we didn't it. make it. We were, we were so, so tired. Yeah, we were not used to like travel that much, play the yeah back to back many, games, right? Because that many games and like that quality, that intensity, mm. that intensity, definitely, man. that intensity, definitely. like. Everyone wanted to like win because even if you were like, I think I was 10, 11, mm -hmm. everyone wanted to win because we were facing the best teams in Europe, in the world, not just in Europe. Uh, yep. So yep. every game was tough. Uh, definitely. Uh, but eventually it turned out being like so much fun. Exactly, and man. And it's like the exposure just, just yeah. play and compete at that level. Yeah. And then something that people don't think about is like, okay, we are 10 years old. We just pick Italian. We never met a f like a foreign person. Yep. We arrived there and we have people from China, people from oh, yes, South America, bro. people from yes. Germany, France, like from everywhere. Yep. So like experiencing those different cultures, right? You play against kids that don't understand your language and yeah. you can't even speak to them yep. because you don't really know English when you at the age, you know? Yep. Yep. Uh, so wow. it was it was very cool, man. Okay. Uh, that that's absolutely my highlight of the of those years. Really. Yeah. And and I'm guessing right. It was during that time was when you began to be to become more aware of the different playing styles, right? Based on uh, from those different clubs from those different countries. Definitely. So especially during that tournament, right? Because that that's when you know you played against a lot of those different um, clubs, top clubs from from all over the world. Are there any like playing styles from those different countries, whether it be like you know the Benficas, yeah, or the what's Club Club Americas, or, or or the Real Madrids? Are there like any of those clubs where you saw like a different playing style, like a different way they played compared to the way you guys played at yeah. AC Milan? Yeah, it's completely different. Like uh, I could I could tell you like us and Juventus, like the Italian teams in general, we care a lot about the tactics already. Like for example, playing as a defender. At the time we were playing, I think I think three in the back because yep. we were playing nine v nine at the age. Okay. Um, but you already have some tactical concepts, which like in the other countries they don't give you. Like they they tell you like this is the ball, have fun guys. Mm -hmm. Like you can like they they play around concepts like on on the possession like on the offensive part. Okay. But in the defense. Nobody is teaching you how to defend as a team. Mm. But in Italy, we do. Absolutely. So we were more, I would say, like our way to play was a little bit more schematic than the way Benfica was playing or Barcelona was playing yep. or Real Madrid too. Mm -hmm. But eventually, when we raised and we grew up and we were like U14, U15, and we faced again 
those te- again those teams mm-hmm. uh, that was a point for us because we were used to play exactly. and defend as a team yep. we had concepts and other defenders were sucking without the ball really with the ball they were building up very good from yep. the back and like they had quality yep. they had the game exactly you, you could tell but yep. when we had the ball they struggled a lot defending interesting so it's just a different way you know to teach to teach the game absolutely and and man listen listening to it i feel like you know the way AC Milan did it was uh, you know long term you know way more beneficial than because i feel like do you and 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 you know you could tell me if you agree if you agree with me or not but at that time especially playing u9s i i guess you know at that stage they want the coaches want the players to have that freedom to be more to be more creative you know, before like throwing, you know, like systematic, you know, how to move as as, as a team defensively. Yeah. But you guys, straight from the bat, they were teaching you, yeah. you guys early. So by the time you guys build up, you guys are already used to that. Yeah. Okay. I would say more also like they teach a lot of individual tactic, which mm-hmm. is something that not everyone is doing. Like yep. uh, nine years old, they already knew how to body position uh, in a 1v1 situation. Mm. And the bending also on what type of striker I was facing. Yep. Like I knew that if the striker was faster than me, I just had to don't let him turn. Or if he was stronger than me, maybe don't be on his back immediately, but just step a little bit back yep. and then int- get the ball. Exactly. You know, like all these little small details. things. little details. Yeah, these the details, details that like, I don't think everyone is teaching, but nope. they are making a huge difference in yep. the game. I'm telling yep. you. Yep. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Yep. And and this is how we see, right? You, you know, we can't even compare, you know, travel teams. Although, you know, the, the MS Academies nowadays are getting a little better at it. Definitely. But you can't compare, you know, travel teams or clubs like that compared to those academies in Europe because it's just those details of the game is what is what stands out. Definitely. And that's why also I think in Italy we have we always had great great defenders mm. like those years yep. we had Maldini, Nesta, Cannavaro, Materazzi yep. like absolutely world class players exactly and because in Italy you learn these small details especially without the ball absolutely that in the long term in the long run like is it was it will show yeah, yeah. it will really yeah. show definitely so after that that big tournament and you guys did really really good, you know, making the semifinals. Yeah. Was that the first time that you guys really, you know, traveled and compete in, you know, if you wouldn't say on the world stage in the youth in youth soccer, we, in youth football? We did it already, but that was the biggest, the biggest one the biggest at that time. Yeah, the biggest okay, tournament. biggest tournament. Going back home after that tournament, you know, how was what what was it like, right? Getting getting that experience and coming back home to compete. Everything was easier, man. <laughs> For real. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, we used to play with that intensity. Like that tournament lasts like two weeks. Okay. And you know, it's it's a pretty long time when you are ten, eleven, like to be traveling between Portugal and Spain from yep. Italy, like for two weeks is is a big big deal. Really? So when I we got back we were like, We did that. <laughs> I, I don't care with who we're playing now, Absolutely, but like, we're yeah. going to smash them, you know, like we had that experience. Yeah. Now nothing is going to stop exactly. us. Exactly, confidence, yeah. man. So that year we just rolled out, man, like we were playing and we were confident and it was just a lot of fun, honestly. Okay, really? Yeah. So uh, are there like any, you know, any memories, right, from, from, from that point, you know, after, after that big tournament and you guys were just dominating or just really doing well, you know, any big thing that, that stood out during that period? We switched mentally. Like mm-hmm. we knew that we were good, yep. and we knew that because we played against people from all around the world. We faced them and we beat them. Mm-hmm. So I remember that after that, all the tournaments and the games we had in Italy, we we, we rocked. We rocked wow. it. All the tournaments we went to the finals, mm-hmm. and then it's always against Inter or Juve. And, yeah, yeah, you know, yep. they're good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> but only like the other top dogs in in Italy, right? When yeah. you, when you guys played them, that was a, the challenge, yeah. you would yeah. say, right? I remember that year, uh, we played against Inter, which again is the derby, is like uh, probably the biggest game you yep. can play when you are in uh, AC Milan Academy. Yep, yep. Wow. We faced them like four times. So the first time we lost, the second time we tied, the third time we tied, and then there was this tournament in Rome with all the Serie A uh, teams. Mm-hmm. And we made it for the, to the final, 
Mm -hmm. uh, in that tournament, we beat Ro Roma to the semis. Okay. And I'm a Roma fan, and I scored. Oh. I scored during the game, okay. and I celebrated like Totti, you know, with the. Yep. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they were so mad at me and stuff. Yep. <laughs> but we made it for the final, and we guess what? We were facing Inter, so that mm. year we never beat them, and uh, but that was the final, man. So we had wow. different different yep. kind of energy. Exactly. And stuff. So we started playing the game. I had the fever. I remember that, but. Man, I, I scored against Roma in the semifinals. I wanted to play the final. I wanted to play against Inter and beat them, you know? Yep. And eventually we played an amazing game. Absolutely. Uh, we tied during the, I think the, the game lasts like 60 minutes, not even 90. Yep. Uh, we tied 2-2 and then on the PKs we won. We beat them. And wow. I remember the celebration. That yep. was the last tournament of the year. And like also the trip back to to milan that was like man the best memory of that year. really bro. yeah and and what was it how like was it you you what was it Are you under f uh that was you on i think it was you 12 13. okay yeah. really and and you were playing center back man and you're and you're out here scoring yeah. goals like yeah, yeah. wow yeah. so what was it like a like a like a set piece like corner yeah, yeah, like, yeah, was corner, it in corner corner, corner. corner. yeah, yeah so you, you were just you know good with good with the head was it yeah. the head yeah, yeah. Heather, okay Heather, man. i had it <laughs> so Moving on from that, right? How involved are are the like you know parents and like just the fans, you know, to with, with the youth soccer at that time at that yeah. age? How involved so, are they? I think parents is a huge factor also for the players. Yep. So in Europe, when you move to from U thirteen to U fourteen, okay, in U fourteen you start playing a a league like a national league. Mm -hmm. So in U fourteen, they start like calling you up for the national team. They okay. start calling you up for. Uh, I don't know, uh, sponsorship with Nike, Adidas, or whatever. Definitely, definitely. Uh, so it's a huge step yep. between U13 and U14. Yep. And when you get a U14 and maybe you're a good player and they start calling you up for the national team mm -hmm. or Nike calls you up and maybe an agent came to you and oh. just say like, hey, I believe in you. I think you're going to make like big bucks with this game. You're yep. going to make a great career. I want to take care of your image and everything. So... That's where the parents are important because you know if you don't really have the culture of the sport and you don't have experience in and that, the knowledge too, yeah. you know of, of how that how they how that, how that operates. Yeah, because man, when you are fourteen, like you're still a kid exactly. and you don't understand exactly. that. Exactly. So the parents, uh, a lot of them, they can ruin mm. the the kid. You know what I mean? Like absolutely. If maybe Adidas decision. is coming to you or like a sponsor or agent. They might think like, okay, you already made it. Let's find like the best deal. Okay. You know. Yep. And this is absolutely the worst thing you can do at that age. Absolutely the worst. Interesting. So I would say the parents are a big part of of, it, all, of the process because they have to actually teach you how to think and like staying with you, but always being transparent. Like mm. you know, you are 14 years old. Absolutely. Before you even. I mean, okay, let's talk about like youth players, like stars that play in the first teams. Like okay. either you're Pedri, okay, or yep. uh, uh, I don't know, Yamal, yep. okay, yep. which yep. are like one out of millions probably, okay? Yes, bro, you know, but it, absolutely. <laughs> if, if you're not that good, which is all right, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's nothing bad. Exactly, the, the average normal player, right, even in the academies are not going to be, you know. You need someone to tell you like, you just need to think about working every day yeah. and don't think about f things that are not on the field. You exactly. just have to think about the field, your skills, and develop yourself as a player. Absolutely. You know? Things that are in your control. Yeah. So develop that and work on that and don't think about like making money or like, uh, I don't know, free cleats at that age. Like yeah, you don't have yeah. to care about that. Yeah, exactly. Because those are distractions. Mm -hmm. What you have to care about is the daily effort you put on the field and how to like uh, get better in whatever you need to work on. Definitely. Like, it could be maybe hit the gym. It could be uh, get better with your technique skills or like, uh, I don't know, uh, could be whatever. Also like the film, like yep. just re-watching your games Absolutely. to see, okay, Maybe I could have done this instead of this, you know? Like, just keep keep playing with, like, uh, the final goal of getting better. Exactly. You know? Exactly. At least until you are in the first team. But yep. even when you get in the first, first team, team you still have to... Your very first experience, you still didn't make it, man. Mm. <laughs> you still didn't make exactly. it. Exactly. You have exactly. to show up every yep. day. Every single day. You know? Yep. 
Because it could, it could still end like this, man. Exactly. Anything. If you, for example, if you get injured or uh, if your contract expires and you didn't play, you didn't like show your skills. Uh, like, yeah, but you didn't, you, didn't, you didn't really prove, you know. What's next, you know? So Absolutely. And, and and even tackling it from a different a different side too the nutrition right the things you yeah. eat even at do, even at that age you have to be very mindful yeah. man if you want if you want to optimize your 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 game yeah but if you if you're part of a big club in a huge academy like they provide you everything yeah ex- okay. We oh, had, okay we had we had the nutritionists we had the Oof. doctors we had the physiotherapists man. we had a bunch of different uh, conditioning trainers yep. Uh, our coaching staff uh, was always around like five different coaches, mm-hmm. like the f- main one, uh, the um, assistant coach, and then we had like three specific coaches for like the strikers, the midfielders, and the defenders. So sometimes we were practicing as a team, uh, but I don't know, for example, on Tuesday, uh, uh, the strikers were going with this different coach to just try like combinations and uh, you know, shooting sessions. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, wow. And maybe on Friday, the defenders were working a little bit more with the defender coaches. Yep. And I had some big names like, I don't know if you guys ever heard them, but like Stefano Nava, for example, he played for AC Milan on the first team. I think he played also for the national team. He won Champions Leagues. He, and he taught me a lot, man. <laughs> I had no idea of some small details. Small details. Talk to me about Very that. small details. Like, I don't know, for example, when you play... A 2v1 situation or yep. like a 3v2 situation, how you cut off a player yep. so you isolate the other player to go where you want him to go. Yeah, okay, you force him in the, in the direction you want yeah. him to go. And then even when they have the space to shoot, yep. how you have to put your feet so that the for the goalkeeper it's easier to save the shot. Yep, it's like it's, then, then the deflection. Yeah, it's very like... It's very small details, but they make a huge, a difference. huge difference. And then, guess what? Like, I was watching the Serie A games, the Champions League games, and they were doing exactly what the coach was telling me. And but at the level we were playing at, like U15, U16, like just few players were doing that. Already. Absolutely. So Absolutely. having the chance wow. to have also these world class coaches you know, to, to teach and teach you and learn you and you have to learn from them, yeah. man. I, I, I always say like you have to be like a sponge. <laughs> <laughs> you know absolutely man you have to be like a sponge absolutely and people is giving you like information, information. knowledge and stuff yeah, very you just have to information get all of them and yep. make, make the best out of it yep wow so moving up from that and and i'm i'm, I'm pretty sure like it's, it's different compared to here right where especially for travel where like you have players you know you go to practice and it's just like you train with the whole team yeah but it's just mainly scrimmage right you do drills yeah. and then scrimmage i'm guessing over there it's, it's way it's different it's yeah, different. the the practice sessions are way different. Like, uh, first of all, you already know, like, based on what day in the week you are at, mm-hmm. uh, what's the goal of that day? Like, for example, I don't know, uh, on Tuesday it was uh, um, conditioning, so you made a lot of runs, mm-hmm. even, like, if you played scrimmage games, like, yep. you always had to, like, do extra sprints or stuff like yeah. that. On Wednesday, maybe it was strength. So you started with the warm-up, and then you started the gym with the whole team. Then you got back on the field to transform the lift session you just done in the gym Absolutely. on the field. Yep. Uh, then oh, you knew that okay. Thursday was a game against uh, uh, the older team. Like, uh, we were the 99. We were playing against the 98s. Oh. So it was like scrimmage, you know? Yeah, like but 11 v. 11. So it was yep. a real game. Yeah, 45 Absolutely. minutes. and. Woo. They were very good, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the 90s, there were like, uh, I don't know, Locatelli is playing in Juventus. There was Cutrone that played in uh, in the Wolves in yep. the Premier League. Yep. He played for Milan, he yep. played for Fiorentina. Uh, and there were a bunch of players that are still playing professional in Serie B and Serie, and Serie C, which is the third division in yep. Italy. Yep. So the level was, man, was very high. That's absolutely. <laughs> so, <laughs> Damn. but the thing is that you knew when you got into the, into the field, like, Okay, today the goal is this. Mm-hmm. We have to do this. Get ready for that. Absolutely. You know? Um, so, yeah, it's totally different. You try a, li- a lot of different drills and more specific for, like, your position. Your position, exactly. And here, what I noticed in the U.S., you work a lot on, like, um, patterns, okay? So, for example, yes, yes. you do, like, 11 against nobody just... Patterns like okay, center back, the ball has to go there, and yeah. then from there. 
In Europe, yep. what you work on is concepts. So they tell you like, okay, if we want to create the space here, you have to make these kind of runs. But if the striker is in that position, maybe you don't want to run there. Maybe the other player has to do that other run. And so every time you had the ball, you have a different scenario. And based on your knowledge on the concepts you have, absolutely, you make different runs. Exactly. You make different plays. Yep, yep. Here is nothing, is nothing like that. Here is way more patterns. Mm -hmm. So based on the scenario you see, okay, I have to give the ball to that guy. Yeah, you know. Yep. In Europe, is way different. It's way different, and and I feel like you know just the way, just the concepts are way are, are better because it allows a player to make the best decision in given in that situation, right? You you you're in that situation, you know. Based on, on the concepts you're learning, you know which outcome or, or what you should be doing in that specific instance. Whereas if you're, if you're doing patterns, it's like you're, it's like you're basically forcing yourself to play. I those. don't know if you watched the um, TV show about uh, Man City with Guardiola or like if you watch... Oh, uh, was it All or Nothing? Yeah. Yeah. Or if you watch also like Brighton's game, do you okay. think those guys are playing with patterns or they're playing around concepts? Think about it. Like yep. it's, it's crazy. Like best teams. Of course, it's something that you have to teach and learn like throughout the years is not definitely that that exactly easy, you're right 100%, you know? 100% 100% yeah but that's also uh, the philosophy in uh, in uh, especially in Milan but also in Barcelona mm. uh, like from the U14 every single team is playing like the first team is playing so they teach you the concepts and also you're playing with the same um, with the same concepts of the first team, yep. so that when you raise and you maybe are ready for the first exactly, team, you can match that. You it's easier for you, you know? It's Absolutely. easier. Man, wow. So this is something that I really struggled with when I moved here yep, because yep. here is way more schematic and I don't mm -hmm. think football is a schematic game. Schematic, yeah, man, listen, and <laughs> and you're right and it's being proven, right, when you when you compare the levels, yep. you know, in Europe in compared to here. So that that's, man, that's a very interesting way. I, I never really thought about it like that, but once we break it down, it makes sense. It makes yep. sense. And that was around, you know, when, when you were playing against the, the 98s, it was around what, what you, U13, 14, around what time was the same? From U14 to U17. Wow. You always, every Thursday, you play either against them or yep. if they can't because they have uh, games uh, scheduled, yep. they call uh, some other team from out and you just do like a friendly game. Wow. Okay. Okay. And it's actually good because uh, guys that don't have a lot of minutes uh, during the weekend, they can show the skills and they can still get minutes during the week you know? exactly and that's the chance and that's why the level is still high because people that are maybe subs during the weekend during the league they want to show that they want to play yes <laughs> you know definitely so even if definitely. you're a starter yep and you play there you have to show up and you have to compete exactly you have to you have to keep on earning that spot man you have yeah. to keep on proving you know that if you don't show up for more than one day. But even if you don't show up for one day, the next game, you're not going to play because the level is high, it's competitive. Oh, you know? man, absolutely. But that's eventually like what makes a player. Definitely, you know? definitely. Okay. So what are some things, right, that, that, that the club would do, right, to get you guys more involved, right, beyond just coming, to, coming and train and, and all of those different things in the games? You know, like, like like we spoke about, like yeah, yeah. you know, talk, no, talk we had uh, we had a lot of things, especially like when you play in these big teams. Uh, especially as I said, from U14, you start to thinking as like, this is gonna be my job, okay? So for example, we had TV shows we were going at mm. like as a guest. Yeah, yeah. So young, man, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we were going at the San Siro Stadium from every age to watch. The champions because at, the, at that time Milan had huge players as yep. I said like yep. huge players yep uh, and that was amazing they were playing Champions League against Barcelona Arsenal like bro great teams yep. great teams the perfect the, the the right time to be at the AC Milan yeah. Academy was, yeah. was around that time yeah. yeah and then for example every Christmas we had the the party the party uh, where we were close and eating with the first team players yep which was like, absolutely. I'm here, the I mean, Christmas party, crazy, there man. is Kaka sitting there, there is Pirlo there. Oh my God. <laughs> and you can ask them questions. <laughs> yeah, you, know? you just go up to them, man. Yeah. yeah. You can ask them like, what What do you think is, uh, I don't know, how can I get at your level, man? 
and they're gonna tell you like, yeah, exactly. uh, always believe in yourself, you know, keep working, always the same yeah, things. Yeah, but yeah. the thing that he's telling you is like, bro, it's like, I trust this guy. He's exactly. A, he's a champion. He's a champion, right? Like, if he says it right, I mean, you, you damn near better exactly, listen. Exactly, exactly. So Interesting. We had a lot of things, honestly. And right. Listen, the the ball, the ball boy thing too, right? What, what did yeah, you guys do, thing, the ball yeah, boys? Yeah, I started doing a ball boy when I was eight years old. Okay, uh, wow, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, man. I mean, I how, how was it? You know, just being there, it. you're being at the fields, seeing, I you know, it. top talents, right? I love it. Play. I love it. Wow. The thing is, uh, when I first started, that was... That was a different game, man. Like, okay. <laughs> I I thought that them like their aliens, like the intensity, the things they're doing is like there's no way I ever get there, you know. Mm -hmm. But then you start growing up, and yep. then you start year it. by year you go there, and then you start being like 17 years old. Absolutely, example, you know? absolutely. And you go there and you say like, wow, I remember these guys were in a completely different level. They're still good. Yep. But what makes the difference is the intensity they put, you know. The intensity absolutely. because yeah. they're not aliens. Yeah. They do mistakes. Absolutely, they do absolutely, mistakes. definitely. They do. Yep. But they're still human beings. So like, it's just the intensity, the mentality they have, and the physical qualities. Or I mean, also the technical qualities. Yeah, but yeah. It's something that you can learn. You can get at that level. You can get at that level. Yep. When you are eight years old, you think of them like, wow, they are aliens. I would never get there. You know. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> so that's something. Uh, something that I remember about that. Uh, and then something also very interesting in that, like, you have two different, in AC Milan at least, you have two different um, facilities, how do you say, facility centers, like sports. Okay, yeah, yeah facility center, yeah. Yeah. So until the U17, it's just like U17 to U8, okay? So you just practice in, in this center. And then there is for the U19 and the first team, yep. there is Milanello. Mm. which is 45, 50 minutes away from the actual city of Milan. Okay. okay, yep. But it's insane because you practice here on the field and in the field next to you, there are the champions. And even if you if you go to the gym or like uh, there is uh, the, um, the restaurant there. Oh, the cafeteria. The caf kind of. It's okay. more of a restaurant. More, more with, restaurant. Uh, with a restaurant. Oh. chef and stuff. Woof. You eat with uh, at in-home chefs, huh? You eat with them. Yep. I mean, like maybe you're in the crazy. gym and there is Balotelli there, or like, you know, <laughs> there was Ibrahimovic there, you know? Yep. Yep. And I was like, man, that was wow. inspirational, but it's also dangerous. I remember Ooh, the first. Okay. Talk to me about that. The first, uh, the first day in the in the Primavera, mm -hmm. which is the U19 game uh, team. Yep. Uh, we had the coach. He he told us. So we spent 30 minutes in the locker room before going out to practice. He told us like. So first of all, they cut more of half of the team from U17 to mm -hmm. the Primavera. So mm -hmm. like just 10 of us kind of made it. Yep. Oh, wow. And okay. the first day we stayed 30 minutes in the locker room before going out to practice. And the coach told us like, okay, guys, you're welcome. Here you have everything to succeed. The facilities are insane. You have the gym. You have the professionals that can help, help you. Help you. you yeah, know? yeah. You can look at the first team and stuff. But on the other hand, it's dangerous because when you step here, you see everything is perfect. Everyone is working for you. But guess what? You have done nothing. You didn't start your career yet. You are not a professional soccer Absolutely. player. Absolutely. Even if a lot of us had the contracts, our professional contracts, like you didn't start yet. How many minutes do you have with the first team? None. You know? But a lot of players get lost because when you play for such a big team, you are living like in a bubble. Mm hmm so you get there and you think like, this is definitely what I'm going to do in my life. Yep. I'm going to be a superstar. Exactly. You know? I have a contract with Adidas. Exactly. Uh, you, you've I'm making good money. I'm here. Absolutely. Next to me, there is yep. Ibrahimovic, Kaká, they're practicing. Exactly. You know? Exactly. You feel, you feel like you already earned it. You already earned yeah, it. But, but when, you, when you really, like, like you said, man, like when, you, when you really realize it, bro, you haven't earned anything yet. You still yeah. have a long way to go. Yeah. Yep. You have done nothing. So nothing. That's, That's something interesting, interesting. Yep. and you know, uh, every every player has a different journey, a different path. Absolutely. And a lot of guys that I met uh, that didn't make it from the U19 to the first team in Milan immediately, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I mean, the cap is huge. Yep. You have to go on loan, maybe in third team, uh, like in third division team or fourth division. Yep. Or whatever. 
a lot of them just gave up because guess what? Milanello was perfect. Uh, the AC Milan facilities were mm-hmm. perfect. Mm-hmm. And then maybe you go in the third division team that maybe doesn't even have a field to practice, you know? Yep, <laughs> yep. So it's still professional, but is another completely exactly. different environment, yep. you know? Yep. And then you get there, you think like, you're a superstar, you have a contract with Milan, and then you go there, you have like the old player, like the 32 years old player mm-hmm. that played all his career in third division, fourth division, maybe second division. Yep. And they're, they're, they're going to be tough on you. They're going to be very tough on very, you. So very, tough. if you're not ready mentally, it's Absolutely. so easy to give up. Absolutely. I met a lot of guys that were very good at years of contracts with Milan and whatever, also with other clubs. And then after two years, they quit really? soccer. Really, yep. They got too complacent, right? They got too yeah. complacent about it. Yeah. Really. Oh, that's very interesting. It's very interesting. And another another thing that, that I realized, right, that was very very beneficial for you as well, right? Can as you said, you know, you were you were doing the ball boy thing since you were eight. Yeah. So while you were getting to see firsthand the top level talent, right, and top ballers play, you were also learning from them and as you you know, you, you grew, you know, learning um, learning and developing your game in your academies, like you're able to I, I'm I'm pretty sure, right? You watch some games sometimes and you be like, man, yeah, okay, I, I understand why he did that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yep. You could you, could, you like and like and like you said, the older you got, you, you realize they're not they're not alien, they're not robots, right? And you just have to like point out the, the, the different things that they're doing. Yeah, definitely. I, actually, after all those years, I'm looking at the games in a different way. Mm-hmm. Even like, uh, I had to shut down the volume of the commentary because like sometimes they they say like stupid, stupid things, stuff. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so really, even, a, every goal I watch on the TV. I can, I mean, either is like Garnacho's goal that yep. is like world class, okay? Yep. Yep. But there's always a small mistake from like the defense or like uh, someone that okay. you can recognize. So I love to like watch the games and analyze those goals because like, you know, sometimes the mistakes are very stupid, man. <laughs> really? <laughs> sometimes are very stupid. Yep. Uh, so like, I don't get, maybe like, I don't know, as a center back, sometimes world class players are just losing the man in yep. the box like yep. man how can you do that <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> like absolutely that's very interesting yeah that's 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 what i realized growing up mm-hmm. and that's why i started thinking and the players like they're not aliens exactly. they're very good yep. they know what they're doing absolutely they put a gr- the intensity is insane mm-hmm. the intensity they put is insane the technique they have is insane but sometimes they make Stu- stupid, stupid mistakes. Stupid mistakes. Yep. So and, and you know, that's what and that's what and at that level, man, that's what will really cost you a goal. Right? That's what will really cost you a game. Is those exactly. silly, easy exactly. mistakes. And then knowing also uh, as a perspective as a player, like I played also in first teams, like seniors level and stuff. I know also the dynamics in the locker room. So something very interesting is like, damn. The coach is not gonna be happy on him. He's not gonna be easy on him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yep, absolutely. <laughs> wow. Yep. Yeah. No, it's it's uh, as I said. Like uh, I've been lucky because football gave me a lot, mm-hmm. and I've been I changed a lot of clubs, and I traveled. I played in Europe. I played here. Yep. I kind of have a full picture of it, and man, this sport is amazing. Really, I okay. love this sport. That's just that's amazing. Now. We're moving up now, okay? So it was it was around. You said it was from U fourteen to U seventeen is when you were doing yeah. that. So what what was what was the next big break for you, right? What was next for yeah. you after that stage? So the thing is, uh, after U seventeen, as I said, you have the Primavera team, mm-hmm. uh, which is the team that you, the U nineteen basically. Yeah. Okay? Uh, the thing with me was that the the Primavera when you are there, you have the for my age, we had the 97, the 98, the 99, okay? So you have different ages of guys, players, yep. which is the first time in your, like, academy career that something like that happens. And I remember that the 97s were good players. The 98 were insane. Like, all of them were in national teams. Like, Oof. And I was like, man, I don't want to bench for a year. I want to go somewhere that I can play. Exactly. I know that if I go maybe in a smaller club, the same level, same league, you know, I can play. Mm-hmm. So I remember I used to go once a week in uh, Filippo's Galli uh, office. Mm-hmm. He, he, 
He's a former player. He won, I think, two Champions League. He played oh. for the national team. Oh, wow, man. And he, at the time, he was the director of the academy. Yep. Uh, but uh, I signed. I had two years with them. Like, uh, I had to stay with them, no? But I was trying to, you know, like, man, I, I was explaining to him, like, man, I, I, need, I really need to play. Like, how can I develop my skills if I don't play? Like, I can practice so hard, whatever, yep. but... Absolutely. But that was a mistake eventually. I will tell you why. But okay. anyways, uh, I used to go there once a week, whatever. We were arguing. And, and then eventually they released me. And I had three, four offers. But uh, as they didn't like the way <laughs> I probably talked to them and stuff, mm -hmm. all the offers I had shut down. Like what? from nothing. From nothing. Yeah, as well. Eventually I had what? to move. I had to move to Bari. Just because the sport director of the team used to work for AC Milan and he knew me. So it was like, there's no way you are free agent. You, you can come here. Yeah. And Barry was in second division at the time. And for me, it was a good deal because uh, I was playing the same league of um, Milan U19. Mm -hmm. But I was actually playing. Absolutely. And during the week, I was practicing with the first team, which is like the level was top because they were playing to... Uh, promotion so they were yep. like one of the best teams in Serie B yep. and I went also like on the bench a bunch of times and the stadium man the stadium was insane yep. 40,000 fans every game Ooh. in second division it's absolutely something, it's something different oh man oh my god <laughs> you really bad oh so eventually gosh. eventually I've been lucky but I would never quit AC Milan because I wanted to play like it's stupid now that I think about it, it's stupid because you're always in a seminar. Even if you don't play, you stick there, you stay there mm -hmm. because you can always get some knowledge, you can always get better, and then you never know what's going to happen. Exactly. You never know. Yep. So after one year that I left, they, they sold the club and they changed a lot of things. So a lot of players that, in my head, they couldn't play there, like they, they would never play, they were starting playing. They were starting playing, so I was like, "Man, if I was there now, I yeah. would play. I would smash." You <laughs> yeah. know, like, so that eventually turned out being a huge mistake. But it's experience, man. Like, exactly, you know? man. You know, you would have never. You you know, you don't think about these things would happen. You yeah. know, so so it's like like you said, it's an experience. You know, you learn you learn from yeah. it. So so how how was it? You know, moving to, to playing for that Division Two team. How was that for you? Right? How, that, how was that experience? <sighs> That that was tough at the beginning mm -hmm. because you know uh, you get into a new, completely new environment. Exactly. Uh, is in Italy it's hard because it's I was from Milan, from AC Milan, and I found myself in the south, which is completely different, man. Mm -hmm. Like really? also the people they speak a different type of Italian. Like for the first months I couldn't even understand them. Really? Yes, man. It's like. Uh, no, it's not like uh, British English and American English, but almost. Okay. It's, it's a little yeah, bit it's more. Okay? Something, something yeah. along those lines. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit more, uh, different. But mm -hmm. and the guys, guess what? They, they like the guy coming from AC Milan. You know, like I had a very humble attitude. Absolutely. But absolutely, it's it's like you know this is our team. You're joining us. <laughs> you know. Yeah. They were kind of scared of the guy coming from AC Milan. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, at the beginning, it was tough, but yeah, you know uh, the new guy, right? Yeah. The new guy, yeah, had to get used to it, and, and so uh, to get used to living alone for the first oh. time, you know, like a, lo a few things, and yeah. then like I was pretty far from home. It was like ten hours by car, you know. So it's, it's like it, it was pretty far. It Absolutely, was, it, it was interesting though, man. Mm -hmm. It was interesting, and it, yep. it built me up. Yeah. Uh, but then eventually, after like a month, every Thursday we were doing the friendly game against the first team. And every Thursday, I was giving my everything, man. 100%. 100%. Every game. 1,000%. Woo! And the, the first coach, the main coach of the first team, yep. uh, after the first game we played, he was like, man, from next week, you're part of the team. You come with us. <laughs> so really? uh, after two months there, I started practicing with the first team. Yep, still playing center back, right? You're still a yep. defend, you're defender. Yep. I started uh, practicing with them. Uh, and of course, I mean, at the beginning, I struggled. The level was was top, man. <laughs> the level, there were players in playing like in the national team, in the seniors national teams. Wow, you man. know, like wow, good players. Yeah, like really, former, yeah, good players. Former Syria, uh, there were players that played in Europa League and like Kozak. There was Kozak. There was uh, um, 
In that team, two years before I arrived, there was playing Kamil Glick. Wow. He's like a big time center back. And there were Basha, uh, there were Floro Flores, Brienza is like players that all played like in Serie A and yep. scored a yep. lot of goals. Top, yeah, top, top, top elite athletes. So at the really. beginning I struggled, but eventually I realized that after like a month, at least with the intensity, I was at that level, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So it's something you can get used to. Absolutely. And then I was going on the bench with them, but I was playing with the under 19 team. Yep. So when I was going yep. down with the U19, I was like, man, this is so easy now. Yep. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. And I loved it. Honestly, I loved it. So so during that time, you know, you were bouncing up and down from, yep. okay, wow, that, that's, that's some really, really good yep. experience too. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and how long did, did you spend over there before you... So, I've been there for two seasons. Okay. The first one was great. The second one uh, was a little bit harder for me because I had problems. Uh, I got the mononucleosis, I think is in English. Oh. So, I had like the first months of the... I lost completely the preseason. Yeah. I lost weight. It was, it was hard to get back in shape. Oh, no. And then the first team uh, changed. They fired the old coach. And they changed it. I had Fabio Grosso as a coach. Mm. You know, the, yeah, the, the yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> he was my coach there. And uh, I mean, man, honestly, I wasn't ready because yep. I wasn't ready at all. It yep. didn't happen exactly. because they were playing to win and like eventually like they didn't want to risk it. But you know, I was there. I was there. The second year, I didn't feel that. Um, and they told me they wanted to send me on loan. I had two years with them, but then during the summer, uh, it turned out that the owner of the club was involved with mafia. Oh, so, oh my gosh! Okay. Yeah. So they basically like uh, shut down the club. It was a uh, bankruptcy, and now really? Barry is still is still playing, but yeah. it's a new club. So also oh, it's a new club. Okay. So I stayed there for two years, uh, but then eventually, like, I found myself a free agent <laughs> because you know it was a bankruptcy, so I had nothing with them anymore yeah and i couldn't get into the new club because they were changing everyone i didn't know anybody wow so i started that's, practicing wow yeah what, that's crazy yeah i flew back to milan and i started practicing with the uh, friends that used to play for ac milan academy like mm -hmm. you know just to be in shape and, exactly you know and get, get back ready to for it. what's next for new opportunities mm -hmm. And so so after that, man, what, what were some like what were some opportunities that, that you were thinking about, right? And then and then and after that, what did you you know eventually choose? Yeah, the thing is I from U fourteen I always had an agent. So it was kinda uh putting me on the table like mm -hmm. all the opportunities I had. Uh and we were like thinking about it like, okay, if you weren't ready for the second division you might want to go in third division, which is still pro, mm -hmm. uh, and just get some minutes, you know, like try. Exactly. Minute um, experience. Yeah. Footage. So the only thing that um, he found me uh, was uh, Como, that now is in Serbia. Okay. At the time, uh, we didn't know yet he, if he was playing for Serie C or Serie D because there were some bureaucratic issues, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. uh, which is still third or fourth division. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, Como is a great city a great like the fans like it's a great place to play okay okay so it was like yeah let's do that man. absolutely uh i went there man the worst year in my career oh really talk me about that i was just so unlucky man i went there uh in preseason um after like a week mm -hmm. uh we had the center back they used to play in syria in uh, Serie B. He used to play until the u21 national team mm -hmm. so Big time, very good player, but he's a beast, man. He's like, uh, he's like more than two meters tall. He's, oh, uh, he's huge, yeah, man. Exactly. So he's yeah, huge. exactly. He's, he's a huge. specimen of a guy, of a man, you know. So I mean, we God went, damn. yeah, and he's like, he was like at the time thirty four years old. Oh, I was nineteen. Yeah, exactly. And we went for like a header. We challenged for a header, and when I got back, he he just hit me on the arm and. When I get up, I saw my hand, like, my arm was fucked up, man. Like, <laughs> I broke all the bones in my arm. What? So, yeah. So For a head, like, a challenge on a header? Yeah, because he, when we got back, he, he stepped on me. I, he didn't do it on purpose, yeah. of, of course. Oh, he stepped or, like, the yeah, contact? Yeah, 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 he stepped, he stepped. Uh, oh, because be when, we were, when we were challenging, he just, like, hit me with the chest. Yeah. I bounced, man. It was huge. Yeah. 
Uh, and then when I got back, I put my, my hand down and he just stepped on the arm uh, and I broke pretty everything. Um, oh, no. And when I got back, what? I played my first game. I was like, yeah, I'm back. I'm confident. How long I, were you out for then? Three months. And when I got back, it was the end of October. <sighs> I was like, my first game at home, we played against a team that was uh, fourth in the ranking. Mm -hmm. We were first. I was like, man, the atmosphere is amazing. I played the first game, I was like, finally, I'm happy, you know? Mm -hmm. Then, as always, on Thursday, we play a scrimmage game. And out of nowhere, that was cold. It's very humid in during the winter up there. Mm -hmm. And out of nowhere, like, I do, like, I control the ball with the chest. And I, I do, like, to do a step forward. And I feel like someone kicked me from the back. And I was like... I turned and w we all heard like a huge sound, a huge like snap or something. Yeah. So I, I turned and there was nobody behind me. So I tried to step down and I just, I just fallen. And that was because I turned my Achilles completely, like completely. So that year I didn't play for the whole season. For oh the whole season. Oh my man. goodness. And that was a problem because, you know, I came from. The year before, I wasn't healthy. I didn't play. I mean, I played for the U19, but like, you know, it's. I wanted to play for the first team. Exactly, and yeah, exactly, and man. And two years before that season, I knew I could do yep, it. Yep, yep, you, bro, you were on your way there, man. Yeah. You were, you know, hitting those milestones. You were improving, improving, improving. Exactly. And so then, man. I found myself from that position to like don't have a contract anymore with the with the club and then even don't play for a whole year. So basically I lost two years. Of course I was very down. Yeah. But absolutely man. That's life. And mm -hmm. honestly, with big uh, injuries happen like that will eventually turn being a huge opportunity for absolutely. you. Absolutely. A huge opportunity. Oh, okay. I developed like my body. I worked on every single detail. I remember yep. during the rehab I was doing like four different sessions of different practices on the sand, uh, lift at the gym with the physiotherapist, and then I was going to run. Mm -hmm. Every every single session was uh, studied every single in really? any detail. Man. Absolutely. So, like, I I enjoyed the t the rehab process mm -hmm. and how I mental, like, yep. went over it. Absolutely. But as like on the perspective of like the sport directors of other clubs, like, you know, you didn't play for a whole year. Yeah. What are you going to do now? Yep. So I had to restart from basically nothing, man. I had to, I had to go to the third division. Uh, and honestly, I didn't even know what my level was because I didn't play for a whole exactly year. Exactly, for a like, whole year, you know. Man. You had to really get back in the yeah. groove of everything and, and, and see where you are to then start, you yeah. know, getting back up there. So I started playing in the third division, and third division is not pro anymore; it's semi-pro. Okay. Uh, oh really? Um, and I mean, the level is is still is still very good, uh, but I mean, I was ready. I was so angry for like everything happened before mm -hmm. that I turned everything like energy and you know, like f performances on the field. Yep, honestly. Yep. Yep. So. Um, I was lucky because in the team I went, I had the preseason with the coach that used to coach in uh, Serie A and Serie B. Mm -hmm. So it was very good and I enjoyed that. And he talked to me a lot about like, you know, the mental aspect of, because he knew me as a player and he knew my story and stuff. So he helped me a lot. Uh, he, he told me like, you, you just, you know, do your stuff. You're still that player. Mm -hmm. You can absolutely make the difference at this level. Mm -hmm. Just Just go and show up. And man, I had like three, four months, the first part of the season until December. I was the best player on the field every single game. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Because I was so angry to just get back at exactly. like pro level, you know? Yep. Yep. Uh, You're locked in. But yeah. But you know, in Italy, na nothing is easy, man. Exactly, man. Nothing and you know, easy. and especially in that environment, that competitive environment, you know, two years can really, can really take a toll, yeah. man, you know? So but to to get back to play, I had to make the deal that I was basically signed with this team for two years because what they wanted to do it was like, we sign you, we give you the chance to you know get back, but 
if you're good and you play well, what we want to do with you is just selling you and make money out of it. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? It's fair enough, man. I just mm -hmm. need the chance to, you know, exactly play and yep. come back. Yep. But then eventually I played so well the first part of the season that I already had three offers from uh, the third division in uh, December. Mm -hmm. And eventually they didn't sell me in December because they wanted to find someone to replace me with and they didn't find the right player. Oh. But I was so mad because I also, I was talking to my agent and I told him like, man, if they don't find anyone, you have to find for them because this is a huge opportunity for me. It's now or never because mm -hmm. in Italy there are rules that if you are like under 21, you are considered a young player. Mm -hmm. When you turn 21, you're old. And when you're old, you compete with the legends from Syria that comes to third, fourth division, you know? Mm -hmm. When you're young, the teams have to put three young players on the yeah, field every yeah. Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's that. easier. I heard that, yeah. Uh, so I was like, man, now or never, you know, like that's my train. I have to step on the exactly, train. Exactly, you know? exactly, exactly. It's an opportunity. Yeah. So the coach at the time was mad at me because I wanted to leave. <laughs> Uh, the sport director was mad at me because he thought like my performances were decreasing because I, I was distracted by these offers and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was like, man, if you tell me that, you don't know me. <laughs> but eventually, the market window closed and they didn't sell me. No. And no, man. I was so mad that I told them like, I'm not gonna play for you anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually, COVID happened. Yep. So, we didn't play for the s next six, six months mm -hmm. we started again in september actually in july with the preseason mm -hmm. but i didn't show up to the preseason because i didn't want to play for those guys yep you no know? yep they they just didn't let me go like why man exactly we like why Dang, i played man. for you i, I gave Ex you everything, exactly you know? like we had a deal yeah we had a I deal gave you, i gave you everything and now because of you i didn't go there and Who's gonna tell me I I will still have the opportunity to go there? Yeah, you know? exactly. So I was so mad. Also to my agent, I had to change agent. I didn't have him anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't show up, but you know I still had the contract with them. Yep. So like one month, two months, nothing happened, man. Like uh, they didn't release me. So one day I just decided to drive back there. It was like six hours by car uh, away from my house. Oh wow. Uh, and I was practicing alone. They didn't let me uh, practice with, with the, the team. team. Yeah, man, uh, that's messed they up. They put bro. me in a shitty hotel alone, like thirty minutes away from the field. Yeah, but then God exists, man. <laughs> and damn right, two center backs got the um, COVID. One center back was injured, so basically they didn't have defenders. So the coach came to me and he was like, "Are you in a good shape to play?" I was like. Yes, man. Uh, it was like, do you think you you want to play? Like, like, yeah, I I'm gonna play for you guys, but two three games, then the winter window will open, and then you have to sell me. All right, all right, let's do it. I don't want to be part of the team anymore. I told him mm -hmm. like, let's do it. So I played the three games. I played very well, um, and then during the winter um, the winter market session, I I moved to Florence in another team. Oh, okay. And they were desperate, man. After COVID, like, there was no money. Everyone was scared, you know, like. So the only teams that were getting players were the teams that were, like, in relegation zone or, yeah. like, last in the table. Yep. Uh, and they were desperate, <laughs> man. But they got me and they got another player. Uh, and we brought more than, like, abilities because there were players. But we brought positivity mm. and willingness to, like, to just push. don't give up yeah. and push, you know. Yep. So those six months turned out being like amazing, man. Wow, you see, man, we see started, how, how God works in mysterious ways. Yeah, we started getting results, yep. results, yep. and I really enjoyed that. I also, like I lived there in Florence, it was like everything was perfect. <laughs> yeah, right? everything yep, was man. perfect. I've heard about no? Florence. Yeah, yeah I heard about everything Florence. Was perfect. You know, and during those months were the months that I started thinking about coming over to the U.S. Honestly. Okay. Because I had a friend who played for Duke University. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And during uh, the last uh, season of college soccer, he scored like 15 or 16 goals, Oof. man. He scored a lot. Oh my gosh. And he got into the draft. Mm -hmm. um, he, they didn't pick him up. 
because as international here it's hard. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. But he signed uh, for I think it was Charlotte USL Championship. Okay. Team. No, I think it's MLS, but at the time it was USL Championship. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, man, I heard good things about US. I, I heard that something is going on there right mm -hmm. now, no? Mm -hmm. uh, would you would you suggest me to go? Wouldn't you? And at the same time, my brother was in Portland, as I told oh, you. Oh, yeah, playing yeah. for the Portland, uh, um, the University of Portland. Yeah, University of Portland, yeah. yeah. So I talked to my brother. I talked to this guy. I was like... Man, you, I, I'm hearing just like positive things absolutely, about you know. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so I was like, man, you know what? Just let's do it. Let's begin the process. Absolutely. So um, they edited like all my highlights and stuff, and they started like having these calls with the coaches from uh, NCAA Division One. But the crazy thing is that my English was ass, man. <laughs> 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 I couldn't really? speak English at all. I was, yep. I was on this Zoom meeting. I, I didn't understand shit, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did, 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 was there someone, you know, to, to help you to, you know, to translate some of the stuff? Yeah, my friend was helping me a lot. Okay. Uh, and also my brother. Um, but in the meantime, in the yeah, free bro. time, you know, I was still like trying to learn and study English. That's, that's really good. That's really yeah. good. That's really smart too. Yeah. Yep. So I'm not going to lie. I've been so lucky to have picked FAU because I picked it without like no really know, knowing much about I didn't know anything how, man. Yeah. I didn't know anything. Wow, yeah, so you picked a really you picked yeah. a good program, yeah. Yeah. And um uh, that's it. Then I came here and the first two months were hilarious man because <laughs> as I said my English was <laughs> I was like the yes man. Like, yep, yeah, yeah. You, you could tell yes. me everything I was like yes man. <laughs> yeah, 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 don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the field helped me a lot. Exactly. The field helped me a lot. Yep. And then, and then you know you got you got used to everything, right? You got used to the culture. How was the culture, right? How was there, how was how is the transition, you know, and every the difference between you know the culture in Italy and the playing styles in Italy compared to yeah the U.S. It's very different, especially uh, as you get used to senior level, mm. because you get used to like locker room, you get used to play with older guys. Mm -hmm. And then you arrive here and they bring here like a lot of freshmen from high school or yep, like yep, academies in yep, Europe. Absolutely. And man, I experienced like real football and they didn't. So right now I am the old guy who have to teach them. Yep. Uh, and guide them. Yeah, and guide them. Exactly. And lead them. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's very hard, man, especially with like uh, very young players. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and then other than that, here there is the school and soccer are together, <laughs> which is a big deal in Europe. Yep. You know, I was it's doing separated. soccer. Yeah, was exactly. Job, yep. And then in the afternoon when I was free, I was doing school. It's Damn different. Right. Damn right. Yep. So I had to kind of get used to all the dynamics and stuff. But football is football everywhere. So Absolutely. whenever I was on the field, the game, man. Whenever I was on the field, I felt at home. Yeah. You know, you yeah. felt at home. That helped me a lot, especially really? the first months. Absolutely. Yeah. And as I said, I enjoyed it. And I get used to probably after one or two, I would say one month and a an half, mm -hmm. after six weeks. Mm -hmm. Because at the very beginning, I didn't even understand what the coach wanted from me. Exactly. You know? Yep. The style of play he wanted us to play, you know, like it was, I don't know. Uh, I didn't get it immediately. Also, yep. because when you get here in the fall, you just have like two weeks of preseason. Yeah, and then, and then straight to it. Yeah, yeah, and we were like 12 new players. Yep. So oh, yeah, bro. It's rough. It's, it's rough. rough. Yeah. And then, you know, in Italy, when you don't understand what a coach is asking you to do, you go home and you call your teammates and you talk about it. Mm -hmm. Here, the first months, I couldn't even yeah, talk. You couldn't even, yeah, you, you couldn't, know? yeah, you couldn't really communicate the way you wanted to to yeah. really understand what you need to understand. Exactly. So... It took some. It took, it took some yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah, but eventually it worked out. It worked yep. out. It worked yep. out. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and so now, talk to me, right? As we wrap up, talk to me about you know you getting more into social media and like really you know trying to help beyond just your teammates. At this point, you're you're trying to help people. You know, with, with the videos you're making. You know, like 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 we talked about earlier, where the small details. You know, you, you're really you're really emph emphasizing that in your videos, which I which I really really like about your content. So talk to us about that and how you really you know broke yeah. through with that. So I did my first video during COVID, and I just like recorded me practicing with my brother, mm -hmm. 
And I posted it on TikTok and it went viral. It was like, man, wow, hey. wow there's something in there. Exactly. Know? Yep, yep, yep. And my brother was doing that uh, as a side job, you know. Uh, he's an influencer as well. Mm -hmm. And he was posting goalkeeper stuff. Um, so I was like, tell me everything you know about social media and stuff, you know. Uh, so he taught me a lot of things, honestly. Uh, and then I started doing videos. But at the time, I wasn't really like committed to it because uh, in Italy, in Europe in general, we have this mindset that if you do social media, you can't play seriously yeah, soccer. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. You yeah. are uh, yeah. an influencer or you are want to be influencer. Exactly. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but yep, yep. I genuinely wanted to like transmit my knowledge and my experience through videos. Absolutely. To people that like don't have the opportunity to go in academy exactly you know? and and want to s and, and and are seeking that knowledge exactly so eventually i just like you know shut down all the voices in the locker room mm -hmm. and uh, all my friends and stuff and i kept doing it absolutely with man. my brother absolutely. and a bunch of other friends back home mm -hmm. and when i arrived here like man for social media in the states is is big time like everyone is appreciating it so I was like, and then I have many in the team. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. So, like I was like, <laughs> Shout out, man. I was like, bro, if you're doing it, like uh, I can do it here. Yep, yep, and absolutely. I don't have to hide. Exactly. Like, so you know, eventually I started like scheduling weekly sessions, so, like shooting session, and I have friends that help me, and I do all the wow. editing. Wow, a stuff. very supportive environment, bro. Yeah. FAU you really supportive, yeah. right? So, yeah, from the there I, I grew up pretty quick and. Uh, I had my, you know, small goals for the moment, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I want to keep it going and Absolutely. who knows where it goes. Per man. Perfect. Who knows where it goes. Absolutely. I loved it. I love to, like, you know, still be part of football, soccer yep. knowledge and, Absolutely. like, transmit it to, like, the kids or, like, people from all around the world. Man. I have people man. texting me from Asia, from wow. South America, from the States. And, for example, this summer I played Summer League. I was going to away games and kids were recognizing me and asking me pictures and really? stuff. I was like, man, I, I loved it. Yeah, absolutely. I loved it. Yep. It's not because like they recognize me, but it's more because like... You, you're seeing that you're having some impact, like your videos yes, are exactly. reaching people and it's helping people. Exactly. And I know? hope that it's helping you and you develop those kind of concepts, especially like defensively mm -hmm, wise, mm -hmm. and you can put them on the field when absolutely. you play. You absolutely. Know? Absolutely. If I can give an advice or like something to someone, I'm so happy, man. Absolutely. To help, you know, someone. Yep. Yep. Man, when you when you stay around the game, man, like you said, from four years old, man, you know, you wanted to get into it. It becomes a part of who you are. Yeah, exactly. You know, so obviously you you want to stay around it. And I really, bro, I really admire the content that you're making. You Thank know, you. especially Thank as you, when I when I saw it, I'm like, this guy is really providing a good bit of value for these players Thank you, you know and and it's and it's, people are really starting to appreciate it now you know we saw I, I, like we talked about right where you were you know at the beginning of the year to where you are now right like pe people are really beginning to really appreciate it and really starting to follow and and see it yeah so definitely. any any other thing you want to shout out like anything you got we got working on you, we got working on any other you yeah. shout out right as we uh, close so uh of course i'm happy to be here yeah. and also this i'm loving it man like honestly i'm loving it I appreciate you man and um i'm happy that you know in these months like red bull reached out to me to invite me to some events absolutely lego now yep uh i partnered with war soccer shop for serious like projects yep uh i had like some few good things mm -hmm. going on mm -hmm. uh, but i just want to keep it going and see where it goes and absolutely as i said like i'm just happy to share my knowledge uh, absolutely and that's it man and, and we'll see where it goes that's man it. i'm we're, gonna be tuning we'll in see. i'm gonna be making sure you know we stay in touch right we're course, some man. if i can help you somehow connect you i'll be the first person to do it for yeah. you man i really appreciate you of man. course brother any any advice you'd like to give you know everyone watching man that wants to go pro that wants to make it to the next level whether whether they're in europe in Italy, in the Caribbean, wherever they are, I mean, once to make it to the next level, any advice you got for them before as we close? So one thing I would say is just like, don't listen to anybody else. Yep. Listen just to yourself. Yep. And even if you're struggling, just keep it going, man, because you never know when it, your time is going to uh, is gonna arrive, okay. it's going to hit you. Yep. And 
Just keep believing it. Don't quit. Never quit. Even if you're struggling, even if you're not playing, never quit. That's, Absolutely. That's the secret, man. That's the key. Absolutely. Beautiful. Wonderfully said. Yeah. Well, man, David, man, you know, we've been talking about getting this going for a while, man. I'm glad, you know, we're able to get it going. You know, it's very, it's, very, it's an honor having you on, man, and Thank trusting you, man. me, you know, to come and share your story, you know, and, and hopefully we can have a part two going in the future, yeah, you man. know what I mean? So Definitely. Yep. I still have a lot of things to, to tell you, man. Absolutely. <laughs> we still got more to chat, so we're going to have a part two soon, man, but. But yeah, it was really, it was really like an honor having you on, man, to, to share your story. It's my know? honor to be here, man. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Thank brother. you so much for coming on. Thank you for inviting me.